So guys, we are not done talking about Need for Speed Unbound. Oh my God. I was expecting just a reveal trailer and that was it. Um, there was a lot, a lot of information to digest and talk about. And that is what we're going to do. Um, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think of the trailer? First of all, are you guys excited? More excited? Less excited? I'm definitely on the, the more category, uh, for sure. Anyway, let's jump in. Let's jump in with some of the basics. The game is coming out on December 2nd. You can play the game a little bit early on the 29th of November. We'll touch on that in a second. Also, the game is only launching on current gen systems. So PC, Xbox, Series X and S and PS5. Not PS4 and not Xbox One, just so you guys are aware. Honestly, seeing the game, the game looks great, but I, I can't see why this wouldn't be on PS4 and Xbox One. Maybe for development reasons, maybe it's at, at some point gonna launch on those consoles. I don't know, it's a weird one, but anyway. So this is where I, I tend to lean towards the negative side of the reveal. The Need for Speed cars do feel a bit like they've just been grabbed from Need for Speed Heat. Uh, that, I think that's a fair assessment. We have no Audi at all. We have no Toyota at all. I don't know why this is. I, I know Need for Speed has a sort of negative connotation with cops, street culture and stuff like that. But Ferrari's in the game and they've always been the most strict of every manufacturer. I don't get it. I don't get it. The amount of times I've driven a, a car in a game and I've instantly wanted it. It's a great marketing tool. And normally the manufacturers also get paid for their cars being in a game. So I, I, I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, an, a weird one. But it's a, there's some cool additions. 21 new additions, apparently. 143 cars in total. Got the RX-8, very nice. Got the Eclipse, finally. I think the last time we had an Eclipse was Underground 2, which was a long time ago. We've got the new Lamborghini Urus, um, the Bugani Chiron, if I said that right, maybe not. Uh, the Hellcat and the brand new Nissan Z. Oh yes. So that's the 400Z or whatever you want to call it. Basically the new Z, the new Z car, which is just released in America and I can't buy it in the UK. So I'm gonna have to buy it in game, I guess. So the art style, a lot of people will describe it as Spider-Verse, anime, whatever you want to call it. It's starting to grow on me. And I think it kind of works in terms of the culture, the music in the game, in the trailer, it just sort of works. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? But it is described from Criterion and EA as a graffiti style. It looks like anime to me, honestly, it's, it's fine. I've got some good news, especially for single player people. Single player is in the game and you can play offline. In Need for Speed Heat, if you disconnected, you basically just get, the game would stop, which is very, very annoying. I think they update it eventually, but yeah, Need for Speed Heat has offline, has single player, has multiplayer, and I believe I've heard reference of crossplay. So very, very cool, very, very cool indeed. So let's get a little lowdown on the story. Step into the world of Lakeshore City, where robbery at a family auto shop tears two friends apart and marks the rise from Ricky to top racer on a journey to win the ultimate street race and reclaim the priceless car that was stolen. Right, what was I saying? Uh, so that does really seem like a sort of most wanted storyline. We've had this sort of storyline a few times. There's a slight change with sort of family being an issue. What happens to this car? But again, it feels most wanted-esque, which I'm all for, I don't mind. Um, to get to the top, risks must be taken. Choose how and when to pull it all on the line. Pull in huge drifts on the streets, out driving the cops or placing side bets with your own earnings against rival racers. But remember, the faster you go, the more heat the chase is. Think smart, make bold decisions, and run the streets of Lake Shore. Oh, I can't wait for this game, man. It's actually getting silly. Oh, I need, I need this game. And we have a little bit more. But the element of Need for Speed Unbound that fans undoubtedly notice first will be its heavily stylized art, that is true, which is a departure from the look and feel of the previous entries. I like 
I want change. I said this yesterday about the reveal. I'm fed up of like, imagine if just like a render carrots again, like payback. It's like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care, man. I really don't care. Or oh, heat even. It's, I, I don't know. It, yeah, it depends, I guess. Um, the heavily realistic racing game in general. Um, SAP Rocky will play a key role in the look and feel of Need for Speed Underground, including releasing a brand new track titled, yep, <laughs> that's featured in the trailer. SAP Rocky will also appear in game as a leader in a dedicated mode called Takeover Scene, in which players will work together to take over parts of Lake Shore. Right, so there was a, a reference there to, to betting. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. So it seems like you obviously have earnings and you can decide how much you want to risk in that race, how much of a bet you want to put on yourself, basically. And it seems the more races you do, the faster you go, the more victories you get, maybe in a night, the heat level keeps going up and up and up. Very similar to heat, I guess, in that sense. But maybe a little bit more, um, not, not so in your face, if that makes sense. Also, I did write down in, in like a question mark, what happens when you want to do a bet but you have no money. How do you go and earn that, that first bit of money? Is there like a race you can do? Is there certain events you can do just to earn that initial buck? And what happens when you run out? If you spend like too much on your car or you lose too many bets, what happens? That's the question, I don't know. So I think it's fair to say the cops weren't great in heat. I mean, actually, I'll take that back. They were okay. They were like, meh. Is that funny? Yeah, they're okay. So obviously we saw the, the SWAT team in the trailer, the Raptor, which is obviously brand new helicopters of course so the police are definitely more tactical slightly more advanced and there is equipment you can use so you've got police scanners now in the game a little bit like sort of maybe was it what game was it hot pursuit or rival something like that um also there's a spotting mechanic so maybe you spot a cop and it will track it on the map and you know where it is so you're not gonna get surprised which is always also nice so the police have definitely been upped in the ante Meetups, of course, are in the game. This has been mentioned so many times in the past in terms of leaks and stuff. It is going to be a big factor. It's a way to show off your car to your friends or people in the online lobby. Lo online lobby? <laughs> online lobby. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Also, people within your map. So there's going to be like a sort of online map. You can ping locations, ping events, ping like playlists, and you can just play with some friends or randoms. You can do whatever you want. While the game might look quite similar to Need for Speed Heat, Apparently, I always say this with a, a pinch of salt, the handling and the physics have been improved. You should feel the difference between a big, heavy muscle car and a little light European car, like a little Golf. You should feel it, you should feel it in your senses, how it drives. Obviously there's a big focus now on it being 4K, 60 FPS. So it's gonna feel smoother. The physics are gonna hopefully feel better, more realistic, I guess in that sense as well. Of course it is an arcade game. I think that trailer, by the way, yesterday was probably one of my, yeah, one of my favorite arcade race trailers ever. <laughs> I think that, yeah, it was really good. I've watched it so many times and I love it. It really hit me hard and I want it badly. Of course, Nitrous is going to be in the game. Of course, don't, don't doubt it. Of course, it's going to be in the game. But also there is a, a stylish Nitrous effect as well. So you may have seen this in the trailer. Um, that really cool scene where you see like almost like proper gameplay and it does that just like effects everywhere. So that's been done by basically being stylish, drifting, jump, stuff like that. Maybe doing a really cool overtake. And that is the sort of nitrous special effect. Um, it makes it very arcadey, I guess, but still pretty cool. So you've decided you want to now pre-purchase the game. What are the benefits? Good question. The game is $70. I know instantly people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not gonna buy it for $70. Completely fine, wait for it to go down in price, it's all good. Do you do, you do you. Uh, standard edition though, if you pre-order, you get driving effects, like we've seen in the trailer, you get some license plates, banner artwork and stickers, and 150,000 in the bank for multiplayer, apparently. Okay, so that's, the, that's what you get for just pre-ordering. Cool, okay, that, that's decent. Next up, we have the Palace Edition. For 10 extra dollars or 10 extra pounds, you get a fair few additions. I'm probably gonna buy the game on PS5, maybe, maybe PC. But anyway, there's four cars in this Palace Edition. One is the Golf GTI Mark I, 
the M3 Evo E30, the AMG GT Black Series, the G63 AMG. How these vehicles actually look, is there like a special kit? Do you just get the cars for free? It does say stun for stunningly, stunningly intense new custom cars. So they must be custom in some way. That's kind of mad. Um, also, we get um, some new driving effects, a Mashman decal and license plate. All right. Exclusive character poses and banner artwork, special clothing packs containing 20 unique items. So there's a fair amount of content there for 10 extra dollars. And there is also a collector's edition. I'm very jealous because I don't believe this is in the UK yet. Um, don't quote me on that as of yet. So it may change. Um, also, I think this might be in Walmart. Anyway, it's a bit of a, I don't know. I feel like EA might get in trouble for this. Uh, a balaclava. Yeah, I don't, I, <laughs> this, this may go really wrong. Just gonna put it out there. But anyway, this is definitely confirmed for Australia. Hopefully coming to more territories because I would definitely buy this. A still book, some street artist pens. Is that literally so I can go out on the street and start drawing? Because that's again, um, 24 Hello stickers, five vinyl stickers and a collector's box. Yeah, pretty cool little addition, nothing too crazy. If the price is right, I have no qualms about buying that at all. I think it's a pretty cool little collector's. I, go, I always get these for Need for Speed anyway. Um, hopefully it comes out in the UK, fingers crossed. So, do I recommend pre-ordering the game right away? Um, it's completely up to you, but of course with pre-orders, I would just hold back, um, wait to see some, at least see some gameplay to get a feel for the gameplay, see if you like it. I'm talking proper like 20 minutes gameplay, watch it, do you want it, question mark, and sort of go from there. Um, yeah, that's all, I'd, that's, that's all I'd say on that. So let's talk about post-launch content. Obviously the game comes out in December, great, but we want more content, we want more cars, a bigger map, new events, more online events, please. Um, more customization, anything, I'll take it. Um, I think broadly we've got Big ambitions and plans with modern games these days. The launch date is just the start, and that's no different for Need for Speed. Webster says, I think as a series, it's been a little bit undeserved when you compare it to other, other genres or other live services. And we expect to be breathing life into the game over a period beyond launch. So that'll be an exciting journey for us too. That was terribly read, but you got the gist of it. So they, they are planning on hopefully launching more content after after the game. I've been hearing about maybe four sets of content. I, I don't know, we, we, we'll see what happens. Really excited to see what they do. Please EA. I get it, if the game absolutely bombs, I get it, don't, I, I get it. Back out, maybe work on another game. But if the game does well and it gets support, it gets the love, please support the game. Free content, pay content, I don't care. Just support the game, please. We've got like two cars in Need for Speed Heat and that game was a good game. It was so frustrating. So, question marks again around the post-launch content. Question marks, it would be nice to have a bit of clarity on that. And the car collection is a bit small and a bit samey. There's some cool additions, but it feels very similar to Need for Speed Heat. But outside of that, I'm happy. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave your feedback in the comment section below. Like these Need for Speed videos. Do you, like, do you like the car collection? Do you like the art style? Do you like the trailer? Do you like the gameplay we've seen so far? Let me know in the comments and bye-bye.